What if Plagueis secretly survived until Revenge of the Sith? That is our story for today. Hope you guys enjoy, and let's get right into it. Our story begins on Coruscant, the night before Senator Palpatine became Chancellor Palpatine. Decades of preparation for this very moment were now being celebrated, as Darth Plagueis and Sidious were extremely confident that Palpatine would be elected as Chancellor. It was all but a guarantee. They did it, and with Palpatine becoming Chancellor, Plagueis allowed himself to celebrate with some Celestian wine. With Palpatine set to become Chancellor, Plagueis, under the name Hago Damask, would be able to be his co-Chancellor, and together they would manipulate the galaxy, stirring up war, and eliminate the Jedi to create their new Sith Empire. It was all coming together. As the night went on, Plagueis continued to drink, and Sidious continued pouring new glasses for his Sith Master. The two of them were going over the speech that Palpatine would give the next day. The speech where Palpatine would declare the reason the Republic survives is because of those in the shadows of democracy, those like Hago Damask, and they must be brought to the light. Plagueis thought it would be the perfect plan, and he trusted the assassin Maul to kill Qui-Gon and Kenobi on Naboo, allowing young Skywalker to be one of the first brought into the upcoming Sith army. And as the celebration came to an end, Plagueis fell into a drunken sleep, and Palpatine prepared to leave. But suddenly the dark side called out to him. His election was assured. The Sun Guard was off for the night. Plagueis was asleep. So, Sidious suddenly moved in a blur, blue lightning crackling from his fingertips, engulfing Plagueis' breathing device in a web of chain lightning. Plagueis woke up, trying to resist this attack, but Sidious would not let up. He poured more and more lightning into Plagueis, ravaging his breathing device, suffocating the Sith Lord. And within minutes, Plagueis knocked over the lamps in here. A fire was spreading through the apartment, and Sidious thought he finished the job as Plagueis unleashed a wave of dark side energy, slamming Sidious hard into the wall as Plagueis seemingly died. Sidious was knocked out, and when he finally woke up, the apartment was filled with fire and smoke. He was able to crawl away right as the Coruscant fire team arrived, and Sidious felt victorious. Plagueis was dead. The galaxy would soon be his. And now, we fast forward all the way to the Coruscant Opera House, as Chancellor Palpatine is speaking with Anakin Skywalker. Palpatine knows that Anakin has been having nightmares about Padme dying. He knows Anakin is beyond desperate for a solution to save her, so Palpatine would take a bit of a risk, telling Skywalker the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise, and how Plagueis told his apprentice everything he knows. And though he could save others from death, he could not save himself. And so from deep underground Coruscant, on one of the lowest levels, where scum and villainy thrived, Darth Plagueis listened to this conversation from a bug planted by Mas Ameda. Decades of patience in the shadows were finally paying off. When Plagueis was attacked in his own home by his apprentice, in a cowardly move where he was drunk and asleep, Plagueis did everything he could to survive. Years upon years of trying to influence his own metachlorians paid off, as Plagueis was able to influence the metachlorians in his own body, to regenerate, allowing him to crawl away as the fire spread in the apartment, burning down everything, making it look like he died. And after that, as Plagueis weakly crawled out into the sewers of Coruscant, he realized it was time to adjust his plans. Sidious was powerful, and he would lead the galaxy into war, into becoming an empire, and Plagueis vowed that day to get his revenge on Sidious right before all of his grand plans come together. So, Plagueis waited and watched as Sidious formed the galaxy to his image, and Plagueis was able to bring Moss Ameda to his side as a loyal informant. All he had to do was promise Moss the title of Emperor once he kills Sidious. Plagueis would of course rule from the shadows, but Moss was an excellent puppet for all of these years, and today, Plagueis heard Sidious tell Skywalker about him, so it was nearly his time to reveal himself to young Skywalker, help him do what must be done. And now we move forward to Anakin Skywalker, standing alone inside of the Jedi Council Chambers. Mace Windu just ordered him to wait here, while he and three other Jedi go and confront Palpatine without him. Anakin was beyond conflicted, but as he thought about Padme and realized that in order to save her, he needs Palpatine alive, he took off through Coruscant, flying his speeder, weaving around traffic. And as Anakin flew, he felt something, like a dark presence that has been awakened like it's been itching to reveal itself, and it was now asking Anakin to be let in. And so Anakin opened his mind, and he heard an older, 
gravelly voice speak to him. The voice introduced itself as Plagueis, and Anakin felt a chill run down his spine. The voice was using the force to speak with him, and Anakin responded that he is supposed to be dead. Plagueis said that Palpatine is not to be trusted. He never learned the secrets to save or create life. Only he, Plagueis, has those secrets. Only he can save Padme. Only he can create life the same way he created Anakin himself. As Anakin heard this, he was frozen in the air, but Plagueis spoke again, telling Anakin they will meet soon. But for now, he must do Palpatine's bidding, and only then will the two of them be able to save Padme. The presence disappeared, and Anakin felt genuine hope. This was proof that Padme could be saved, just like Plagueis saved himself. So Anakin decided to listen, speeding off to Palpatine's office, saving him from Mace Windu. And Anakin knelt down in front of Sidious as he became Darth Vader. And Anakin was excited for the future where Plagueis would be his true master. So Anakin would storm the temple with the 501st, Order 66 would be executed across the galaxy, Yoda and Kenobi would be the only survivors to return to Coruscant, and Palpatine would declare himself as Emperor. Anakin would be sent to Mustafar, and Obi-Wan would be sent to defeat him, while Yoda went to defeat Sidious in the Senate Halls. And so, as Yoda was battling Sidious, the Dark Lord was laughing, hurling Senate pods, dueling the Grand Master of the now destroyed Jedi Order. And Yoda leapt up to meet Palpatine on a pod. Sidious was firing lightning at Yoda. Yoda was catching it, staring Sidious in the eyes. The power between them was growing, but right before an explosion happened between them, they both felt their throats suddenly begin to close. Together, Sidious and Yoda grabbed at their throats as they were slowly being lifted into the air, and from one of the hallway doors stepped Darth Plagueis, holding out both of his hands. The Jedi Grandmaster and the Sith Emperor both with their lives in his hands, and Sidious could not believe it. Plagueis was alive, and Plagueis told Sidious he did an excellent job carrying out their plans. He thanked Yoda for ensuring the Jedi were too blind to ever see it coming. And now, Plagueis said the galaxy will be his, as he snapped the throats of Yoda and Sidious. In the many years since his supposed death, Plagueis was forced to live alone in the shadows, but he did not rest. No, every day Plagueis learned, he grew his powers, and now he has undoubtedly become the single most powerful being in the galaxy. Sidious and Yoda fell to the ground, and Plagueis destroyed their bodies with the Force, leaving no trace of their deaths. Across the galaxy, on Mustafar, Anakin and Obi-Wan fought from the landing pad, inside the control center, out onto the bridges, over the lava, and then they fought while floating through the lava river. All the way until now, as Obi-Wan leapt to the high ground, looking down at Anakin, and Obi-Wan called out to his fallen Padawan, saying that it's over, he has the high ground. Anakin yelled back at Obi-Wan that he underestimates his power, and Anakin flipped through the air. Obi-Wan prepared to swing at Anakin and do what he must. But suddenly, he was frozen in place. He simply could not move. And Anakin landed behind Kenobi, stabbing his blade through Obi-Wan's back as the Jedi Master now fell hard down into the rocks. Anakin kicked him down, and Obi-Wan burned away, dying here and now. As Anakin watched Obi-Wan die, he suddenly felt that same dark presence that he felt on Coruscant. And from the top of the rocks stepped the Mun Darth Plagueis. He told Anakin that flipping like that was a foolish move, and had Plagueis not frozen Obi-Wan with the Force, he would be facing that fateful burning instead. Anakin was beyond shocked in this moment, but he did proclaim his loyalty to Plagueis, pledging himself to be his apprentice if he can save Padme. And so, together, the two of them moved back to where Padme Amidala was laying, and Plagueis told Anakin that he will keep his promise. The Sith Lord knelt next to Padme, and closed his eyes. Every being in the galaxy had at least some midichlorians in them, and so Plagueis used the force to influence the ones in Padme to regenerate. She was injured from the choke and falling to the ground, but in this moment, Plagueis was able to influence the midichlorians to return her and the children to perfect health. It was unnatural, but Plagueis had a strong grip on the force itself. He informed Anakin that she will live, and together, they brought her unconscious body to the best medical facility on Coruscant, where Padme would give birth with Anakin by her side, thinking there was still some good in him. And with Anakin next to her, 
Padme was also determined to live to ensure that the children were not trained in the dark side. With Padme in the hospital, Anakin and Masa Mata would organize a Senate meeting where Anakin told everyone that Senator Amidala uncovered a secret about Palpatine. He was working with the Separatists to create the Clone War and form his own empire. And before Padme could reveal this to everyone, Palpatine attacked her. Anakin said that luckily he was guarding Padme and he was able to kill Palpatine before his corruption continued and to ensure this empire does not falter. He and Masa Mata will take over effective immediately. The Senate was shocked to learn Palpatine was leading the Separatists, but they ultimately would accept the rule of Skywalker and Masa Mata. But little did they know, it would be Darth Plagueis that was calling all of the shots behind the scenes. And so Plagueis, ruling from the shadows, would use Anakin and Moss to begin implementing his view of what the Sith Empire should look like. He would ensure a steady flow of wealth into the Empire's hands, as Plagueis' covert manipulation of galactic trade and industry would lead to an unprecedented era of economic growth, albeit one that primarily or only benefited the core worlds and the loyal sectors. Despite the apparent prosperity, the Empire's heavy-handed policies would create some simmering unrest in the galaxy. The Outer Rim territories, burdened by oppressive taxation, and resource exploitation would become hotbeds of rebellion. But Plagueis did not worry about this. He has overcome far too much to worry about some Outer Rim disruptions. Plus, with the clones being phased out and the insanely huge amount of stormtroopers at his disposal, Resistance was quickly shut down for the most part. Even so, stories of Jedi heroism and the harsh realities of Imperial oppression did inspire some Resistance movements. Rebel cells, though fragmented, would begin to coalesce into a more organized and determined force, conducting acts of sabotage, guerrilla warfare, disrupting imperial supply lines, and infrastructure projects. And of course, Plagueis, the strategist, would use these insurrections to justify any further militarization and tighter control over the galaxy, and he would truly begin implementing his Sith army, including Anakin and the Grand Inquisitor, to venture out into the Outer Rim to find and destroy these tiny rebellions. Plagueis had been cultivating the secret Sith Empire within the shadows of the Galactic Empire. He would recruit and help train any dark side acolytes that were once Jedi, embedding them in key positions across the Empire to ensure loyalty to the Sith and to him. These Sith would act as enforcers and spies, rooting out dissent and maintaining a truly iron grip on the populace. Plagueis' Sith Order would grow into power and influence, operating as the unseen hand behind the Empire's might, with him, Plagueis, in control of it all. And yet, with every advance, the Rebellion would gain momentum. Figures like Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, and a hidden enclave of surviving Jedi would provide leadership and coordination to the Rebel groups. The escalating conflict would strain the Empire's resources, and it would expose the fragility of its rule. Acts of sabotage, Daring raids, covert operations, would increasingly challenge the Empire. And Plagueis, while trying to tighten his control, deploying Vader and the Sith Enforcers to crush this rebellion, would soon recognize that the growing unrest could destroy the Empire if he does not soon do something about it. And as the fifth year of Plagueis' secret rule draws to a close, the galaxy was teetering on the brink of full-scale civil war, its fate hanging in the balance between the oppressive might of the Empire and the relentless spirit of the Rebellion. And the more Plagueis thought about this rapidly growing Rebellion, the more he came to accept a deeply unfortunate truth. There had to be someone working against him from the inside. Plagueis wondered if it could be Vader or Masa Mata, but that made no sense. They had truly no reason to do that. But who else had access to all of the Empire's resources and battle plans? It seemed like every time the Sith Empire was moving to take out a Rebel cell, the Rebels escaped just in time. And finally, Plagueis had it. Padme Amidala. After giving birth, Padme left politics and spent all her time trying to raise her children on Coruscant. Plagueis allowed this, as it was perhaps the only way to keep Vader loyal to him, but perhaps he underestimated her. Padme was getting information from Vader and relaying it to the Rebellion. The Rebellion had grown so rapidly because she knew everything about the Empire. And across Coruscant, in her apartment, Padme was looking to Luke and Leia. For five years, she's pretended to still love Anakin in order to help bring him down. When she had the twins, she thought Anakin was still good, 
but it did not take long for him to show that he truly has turned to the dark side. So Padme made a choice, giving up any sense of inner peace to dedicate her life to bringing down this empire, while raising her children with Anakin and her handmaidens. Anakin was evil, and she built the rebellion up so quickly in order to bring down the empire before her children were taken to become part of the new Sith army. She knew about Plagueis, about the Sith, about everything, and she spent her time getting this information to Bail Organa and others working with him to help create the rebellion. But today, Padme wondered if she overplayed her hand as Anakin came home. In these five years, Anakin aged much quicker. His eyes were far darker, hair was becoming thinner, the dark side was taking its toll on him. And Anakin told Padme that Plagueis has requested their presence aboard his ship. Plagueis stayed hidden in a Star Destroyer above Coruscant, where only certain members of the Imperial military knew of him, and he would not say why he requested for Padme and Anakin. So, Padme left Luke and Leia with the Handmaidens, as the two of them traveled to space, boarding Plagueis' ship, making their way to his throne room. As they entered, Plagueis greeted them calmly, and he said he wants to run a theory by them. Anakin and Padme waited, as Plagueis paced the throne room, saying he fears the Empire has a leak, providing valuable information to the Rebellion. And Padme closed her eyes. He knows. Plagueis continued, saying that in his time since this revelation, he has concluded there is only one person who could be this leak. And now he told Anakin that he was a fool for ever allowing Padme to live, as he blasted lightning out of his fingertips, engulfing Padme in it as she rolled to the ground, writhing in pain. Anakin could not believe what he was seeing, and Plagueis stopped blasting the lightning. He then looked to Anakin and told his apprentice that it is time he move on. Padme is a traitor not only to the Empire, but to him. Anakin looked down to Padme, still recovering on the ground, and he slowly walked over to her to ask if it is true. And Padme looked up, understanding this is likely it for her, and so she told Anakin it absolutely is the truth. She told Anakin that he betrayed everything he ever knew, all for his own power gain. The Jedi, the younglings, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, all of it gone. And Padme said she couldn't let him destroy their children as well. Anakin was heartbroken, and for the first time in years, he realized just how far he'd fallen. Anakin convinced himself he did what was right, but now he was looking down at his wife that once loved him, and he saw now that he wanted nothing more than her forgiveness. So as Darth Plagueis came behind Anakin and told him to finish her off, Anakin made a choice. He chose to protect his family. Anakin grabbed his saber, then turned and quickly stabbed Darth Plagueis through the heart. Plagueis gasped in surprise and stumbled backwards. Anakin waited for him to die, but instead of falling over, Plagueis just closed his eyes and slowly stood up straight. He was using the Force to completely regenerate and influence his midichlorians to create life. Plagueis had achieved almost perfect immortality, and he had not told his apprentice. And as he was back to full health, he told Anakin he was a fool, blasting him hard into the wall with a Force push, and Anakin fell hard to the floor, looking up now to see Plagueis ignite his red blade. The Sith Lord swung down at Padme to kill her, but Anakin reached out with one hand, catching Plagueis' blade freezing it in place. Plagueis yelled out in anger, trying to use his other hand to crush Padme, but now Anakin reached out with his other arm, again freezing Plagueis. So, Plagueis instead broke off from Padme and decided a true battle between the Sith was long overdue. Palpatine tried to kill him when he was drunk. Plagueis eventually killed Palpatine when he was distracted, so perhaps this would be a true, real fight to see who the real best Sith Lord was. Anakin ignited his red blade, and he charged at his master. He would find a way to kill Plagueis and save his family. Their clash began with a blinding flurry of strikes and parries, each movement showing their mastery of the Force. Anakin's powers of the Chosen One matched by Plagueis' dark side technique, very refined through years and years of training. Anakin channeled his fury, his strikes fueled by years of training in the dark side, a burning desire to break free from it now, to show Padme that she was right. Their duel took them through the Star Destroyer's many corridors, both of them putting everything they have into this fight. And as they reached the engineering section of the Destroyer, the environment around them became even more perilous. Massive machinery and conduits surrounded them, hissing steam and electrical sparks 
were adding to the chaotic backdrop of their fight. Anakin's raw strength began to overwhelm Plagueis, driving him back step by step. Desperation flickers in Plagueis' eyes as he summons a surge of lightning, unleashing a powerful blast that sends Anakin crashing into a control panel. But the lightning also ruptured the ship's reactor, and a giant fire began to erupt. As Anakin rose back up, his need for victory was guiding him, and with a roar, he lunged at Plagueis, their sabers clashing again. The duel reached its end as they battled towards the reactor core, the ship rattling and shaking as the core has become unstable. Plagueis tried to turn the tide with one last desperate attack, but Anakin countered with a surge of strength, tackling Plagueis with a bone-jarring impact. They hurtled towards the reactor, the heat, the radiation intensifying as they drew closer. And in a final struggle, Anakin channeled every ounce of his power, grappling with Plagueis amidst the blinding light, the searing heat, and he grabbed Plagueis, diving down into the reactor core. The explosion of energy engulfed both of them, a blinding flash that was rocking the entire destroyer. Anakin knew there was only one way to kill Plagueis, and that was by ensuring there was nothing left of him. During the fight, Padme barely made it to an escape pod, and she ejected to the surface right as Plagueis' destroyer exploded, causing a chain reaction through the Coruscant blockade as each Star Destroyer was caught in the explosion, leaving Coruscant vulnerable. And Padme was able to orchestrate a rebellion infiltration of Coruscant before the Empire could organize. Plagueis was gone, Anakin was gone, the Empire was vulnerable, and so the rebellion would spend the next year taking back the galaxy. Every day more star systems would join the rebellion, and the Empire would begin to crumble with this power vacuum. Masameda would try to hold everything together, but he was vying for power with the military officials, until the Empire was so focused on fighting itself that it was left wide open for the rebellion to win. When a new republic was finally established, Padme would step in as Chancellor, with Bail Organa and Mon Mothma as her top two aides in all of it. Luke and Leia would grow up to only remember the good parts of Anakin and his sacrifice to bring down the Empire. And in time, they would unite with a group of Jedi led by Kanan Jarrus and Ahsoka Tano as the Jedi were beginning to build back up together in the new galaxy. And folks, that is where our story ends today. My main goal with this was to kind of do something similar to Return of the Jedi, you know, with Plagueis stepping in for Palpatine. Because at the end of the day, I still wanted to show that Anakin was the chosen one that would have brought down the Sith, no matter if it was Plagueis or Palpatine. So... I mean, ultimately, he doesn't, he kind of turns back to the light, he just kind of sacrifices himself. But I wanted to, you know, kind of, kind of mirror it, while also not. Like, it wasn't the same story. Obviously, Anakin kills Obi-Wan in this, Plagueis kills, I had, you know, a lot was different. But I wanted the ending, at least, to somewhat mirror the Chosen One prophecy, because, you know, that's, I don't know, I thought that was fun. So, either way, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought. Plagueis, interesting character. I got an email to do a video like this as I already had an idea for it, so I was like, heck, absolutely, I'll do that. Let me just, you know, shout out the email user who hit me up, Jeremiah, huge, thank you for that email, for the idea, and yeah, this was fun to write, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.